They say, given that the radius of the circle is five, so the radius of the circle is five, show that B is equal to four. So what I would do is I would just use the distance formula between these two, and I know that that should be equal to five. Okay, now the distance formula is going to go like this. X2 minus X1, and then Y2. Whoops, I'm not going to have enough space. And then Y2 minus Y1. Lovely. Now, of course, you can choose whatever you want for point one and point two. I'm just going to choose this as my point one and this is my point two. Now, I know the distance. I know that the distance is five. And then I can just go for everything in. And so um, that would be two minus minus two and then one minus B. Then what I do is I'm just going to simplify the inside of that a little bit. So that's going to become 16 eventually plus one minus B squared. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to take the square on both sides. Why? Because I want to get rid of that square root. And so that's going to give me 25. And then remember that the square root just disappears. And so I end up with whatever's on the inside. Okay. There are two ways that you could solve this. Um, I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna do the shorter method, but of course, if you wanted to, you could multiply the one minus B out and you could do the whole quadratic formula and blah, 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 blah. You can do that, or you can do a factorizing, whatever. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the 16 to the left. So I'll end up with nine. And then I'm gonna be quite sneaky. I'm just gonna square root both sides. And so I know that when I square root this side, it must become plus minus three. And then if I square root the right-hand side, I'm just going to be left with one minus B. Okay, you see what I did? Let me just show you in case some of you are confused. I just square rooted both sides. Okay. But you don't have to do it like that. Um, when I was in grade 12, I certainly, certainly did not do it like that. Um, but now I've become fancy. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. When you do this every day, you start realizing these little things. Okay, so um, now I'm going to get B. So minus B is going to be equal to plus minus three minus one. Um, oh, that's a minus B. Actually, I'm going to reverse that quickly. I'm going to rather take the B to the, oh, no, let me just leave it like that. Plus minus three minus one. And so if you had to go solve for B, you can get that minus B is either going to be equal to two Okay, so minus B, let me just write that up here. Minus B is going to be equal to minus two, sorry, positive two. Or um, minus B is going to be equal to minus four. And then if you had to go solve these ones, you would see that finally B is equal to minus two or B is equal to um, positive four. You might be wondering, uh, Kevin, why are there two answers? Um, Okay, so the reason that there are two answers is that there are two places where this could happen, where you've got an X value of minus two over here. So the other place that if you're wondering would go somewhere like there, for example. And so this B value here is obviously minus two, but we're not interested in that one. We are interested in this one up here. And so B is equal to four. So B is four. Let me start erasing. Okay, let's move on. Here's the next question. So it says, determine the coordinates of K, and this is only for two marks. So it's got to be something quick or relatively quick. Um, so determine the value, the coordinates of K. Well, what we can see is that um, this point down here is directly underneath point M. Now, I know some of you are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you know that it's directly underneath the reason is, it's a good question if that's what you are thinking, um, this is the y-axis, right? That's the y-axis. Um, yeah, it says at the top there that that's the y-axis, so we know that. And we know that this line is parallel. So because it's parallel, um, we know that this line is going straight down. It's not going at like an angle, okay? So for those of you that are very like, 
I know there are some students that are very serious about, yeah, but they didn't tell us. Well, they technically did if they said that it's parallel like that. So that means that the X value of K is also going to be equal to two because these X values will be the same, right? So what we can do now is, um, hmm, what could we do? What could we do? Oh, so easy, actually. I, I was thinking of doing something so complicated now. Um, we know this distance is five. Why? Because it's the radius. So straight away, if I know that the, K, the, the, the X value is two, and I just go down by five, then I can just say one minus five, and I'll end up with negative four. You could use the distance formula if you wanted to, but you'll realize that it's unnecessary. Okay. And so there we get the answer of two and negative four. So the next one, the equation of the tangent LTP. So that the equations of the tangent LTP. So that is uh, this line over here. Okay. Now to know that equation, we know that a straight line is y equals two mx plus c. To find the gradient of a tangent, what we do is we must just realize that these lines here are always perpendicular. That's the key thing that you need to know. So we can say that um, mt is perpendicular to pl. Why? Because a tangent is always perpendicular to a radius. And so we know then that the gradient of mt multiplied by the gradient of PL must always give us minus one. That's just a mathematical thing that we've learned since like grade nine, actually, that when two gradients are, when two lines are perpendicular, their gradients, when you multiply them, is minus one. So we can go work out the gradient of MT by using the gradient formula. I'll use... Um, let's just say that's a four. I'm going to use this as position or point number one, and I'm going to use this as point number two. Doesn't really matter. You can choose it the other way around. And so that's going to be one minus four over two minus minus two. And that's going to give negative three over four, negative three over four. So we now know that the equation of, um, or the gradient of that line is negative three over four. So I'm going to quickly speed up a bit. We can now find the gradient of PL. And so now we have, now we have the gradient of MT. So we have the gradient of that line. And so then what we can do is we can calculate the gradient of PL. So we can say that the gradient of MT, which is negative 3 over 4, multiplied by the gradient of PL should always be negative one. And if you have to go calculate the gradient of PL, you should get four over three. So now we can go get the equation of the tangent because we now have its gradient as four over three X plus C. Then to find C, you plug in any point on the tangent. So please don't use this point because that is not on the tangent. So what we rather do is we use the point uh, minus two and four, for example. So I'm going to plug the minus four in as, I mean, sorry, the four as the Y value, and then the minus two as the X value. And then if you have to go calculate the value of C, you should get a value of 20 over three. And so the final answer for that equation of that tangent will be Y equals to four over three X plus 20 over three. Okay, so this is an excellent question, actually. So it says that another circle with equation like that is drawn. Determine with an explanation the value or values of n for which the two circles would touch each other externally. Okay, so what does it mean for two circles to touch externally? It means like this. So there's the one circle and there's the other. Notice that they are touching externally. What does it mean if they touch internally? It looks more like this. See, because then they're touching each other, but they are inside. They are like crossing over. That means that they are touching um, internally, for example. or well, they're intersecting. Sorry, that's the better word. They're intersecting. Okay, so I just want to quickly give you guys a quick summary about circles intersecting. Um, so that's called externally. Then if the two circles are like inside each other, but like this, so there's the one, 
and then there's the other, and they touch like that. That is called internally. And then if they go over each other, so for example, like this, then we call that intersecting. Okay, that's just a quick little summary for you guys of the different ways. All right, so this question says that they want them to touch externally. Now, if you look carefully, they're telling us that the radius, or sorry, the radius of the circle is going to be equal to 5, because the square root of 25 is 5. They also tell us that the center, well, they're giving us the x minus 2. So that means that the center of this new circle has an x value of 2, but so does this one. So does that mean that they have the same center? No, it just means that they, the, the, the two centers are both on this line over here. Okay, so what we can do now is we know that this circle also has a radius of 5. So the circles have the same radius. So they're almost the same size. So let's try and make this one the same size, something like that. So the circles have the same um, size. Now, they both have the same x value. So it means that it must be something like this. So it must either it can be above or below, but it can't go left and it can't go right because the x value is a, the x value of the center is a 2. So it can't go left or more right. It must be like that, but it must touch externally. So the one position would be there, there like that. And then the other position um, would have to be, have to go, okay, I can't show you now because I don't have, I, the circle won't let me go up, but it would be, it would be like there. But it's a, imagine that it's a much bigger circle. Okay, so that is the type of situation that we are looking at in this question. Now they want to know what is the value of n. Remember, n is the center point for the y value. So we know that x values are two. Now to find the y values, it's very easy. Um, we can just look at this distance. This distance over here would be five. And then this distance over here would also be five because the radius of both circles is five. So if I take this y value of one and I just add five and then I add five again, then this y value up here would be 11, right? It would be 11. Okay. Now, if I do it the other way around, if I go downwards, then I would go five down and then five again. And so this would this y value would be negative nine. And that is how we get the two n values of 11 and negative nine.